Anavar, aka Oxandrolone, the safe oral anabolic that promises lean to fine muscle gains with minimal side effects. Is it really the miracle drug that fitness enthusiasts claim it to be? Today, we're going to separate science from hype and see if Anavar really is all that it's cracked up to be. What's up guys, Dr. Alex here, board certified urologist and men's health specialist. And today we're diving deep on one of the most popular oral steroids out there, Oxandrolone, AKA Anavar. But why Anavar? Well, as anyone who's ever looked at social media in the past 10 years may have noticed, fitness, wellness, and now TRT have all started to converge and explode in popularity. And besides testosterone itself, Anavar has emerged as one of, if not the trendiest oral anabolics out there. This makes sense. Anavar is usually a tablet or capsule, which means no needles in your butter quads. It also seems to have much less liver toxicity than other oral options and seems to be uniquely good at preserving lean mass when in a caloric deficit. And finally, it has very low androgenic potential, which makes it a popular choice for women that are looking to improve muscle tone without getting Alex Hormozy level facial hair. But there is a lot more to Anovar than just these points. So let's get into the science. So smash that like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and answer me this question. Would you rather have peak Derek's delts, but with Greg Doucette's voice, or Hapthor Bjornsson's strength with Mike Israel tells hair? The people demand answers. Anavar was first synthesized in 1962 by chemists Raphael Papo and Christopher Young while working at Sierra Lab, the same company responsible for the artificial sweetener NutraSweet. Which begs the question, if we don't care if our sodas are natty, why do we care so much about our athletes and influencers? Isn't fake sugar supposed to be bad for you? It's been a day, Veronica. Just let me shotgun my energy drinks in peace. Oxandrolone quickly stood out due to it possessing impressive anabolic potential with minimal androgenic side effects. Initially marketed for promoting weight gain after surgery, burns, trauma, and chronic infections, Anavar became incredibly popular, even among women and children. Despite a pretty impressive safety record, Anavar vanished from markets in 1989 amid rising anti-steroid sentiment, and then temporarily re-emerged in 1995 as Oxandrin, but its manufacturer Gemini stopped producing it in 2019, and the FDA actually pulled its generic approval in 2023, although it is still legally obtainable in the US as a prescription from compounding pharmacies. Chemically, here's what makes Anovar so special. It's a structurally modified dihydrotestosterone derivative that possesses the 17 alpha methylation necessary to survive first pass metabolism through the liver, but it also has an oxygen atom added to its carbon two position. This makes it uniquely resistant to metabolism by the three hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase enzyme that would normally break it down in muscle tissue. This resistance dramatically boosts Anovar's anabolic potential, making it about six times more anabolic than testosterone and uniquely effective for lean tissue gains. Anovar's half-life is roughly eight to 10 hours, typically requiring multiple daily doses when dosed medically, but enhanced athletes will often take it once daily or even as needed before workouts. Side note, Anovar is not my favorite choice for a pre-workout compound, but that's for another video. Unlike most oral steroids that are known for liver stress, Anovar is mainly excreted by the kidneys with minimal liver toxicity. But despite the kidneys doing the bulk of the heavy lifting here, no pun intended, all scientific evidence seems to support that although the kidneys excrete Anovar, they do not metabolize it. Why do I make this distinction? Because in the enhanced community, the term metabolism usually connotates the conversion of one molecule to another while conveying some sort of organ damage. Although there is technically a risk to the kidneys with any anabolic use, we do not see disproportionate increases in renal toxicity with Anovar. To date, I have only seen a single case report of an acute tubular necrosis case related to temporary cycled Anovar use in an otherwise healthy individual. And even then, the source was underground and never tested to see if it was indeed uncontaminated oxandrolone. Now, there may be a different risk profile with chronic and now historic medical use, but even this is difficult to verify. Speaking of medical indications, Anovar was initially approved for multiple conditions that cause severe muscle wasting, including AIDS, burns, trauma, chronic infections, and osteoporosis. And despite Anovar being increasingly difficult to obtain through approved channels in the United States, these therapeutic applications are still valid even today, particularly in severe burn recovery and to offset muscle catabolism caused by prolonged corticosteroid use. And here's something really cool that most people overlook. Anovar acts as a partial antagonist to glucocorticoid receptors. Corticosteroids like cortisol or prednisone can wreck muscle growth, slow healing, and reduce collagen synthesis. 
and of our uniquely blocks these detrimental effects, allowing enhanced recovery, muscle preservation, and collagen creation, which makes it a perfect choice for athletes battling injuries or training in a caloric deficit. By comparison, if you're looking for another anabolic with similar anti-catabolic and anti-glucocorticoid effects, you're either looking at halotestin or freaking Tren, both of which are wildly more toxic than Anavar. In bodybuilding circles, Anavar is legendary for its dry, dense muscle gains without water retention. Yes, if we're talking pure muscle accrual potential, there are absolutely more effective choices for guys. But when it comes to contest prep, lean mass retention during a cut, or recovery after an injury, Anavar excels. In pure athletic circles, competitors in strength and power sports like sprinting and gymnastics love Anavar because it can enhance strength without causing excessive weight gain. Also, Anavar's mild androgenic profile makes it hugely popular among female athletes. Low doses of 2.5, 5, and maybe up to a max of 10 milligrams per day can significantly enhance muscle and strength gains without the same virilization risk of other anabolics, though the higher dose and the longer the time, the higher the risk. And don't get fooled. Mild doesn't mean risk-free. Anavar significantly impacts cholesterol by drastically lowering HDL, good cholesterol, and raising LDL, bad cholesterol. ApoB levels have been shown to increase as well. Prolonged use can increase cardiovascular risk and even promote left ventricular hypertrophy. Plus, contrary to gym myths, I have seen Anavar suppress natural testosterone production, though not always, and subsequently require careful management and post-cycle therapy. Medical dosages historically range from 2.5 to 20 milligrams daily, typically in short cycles. Male athletes will use anywhere from 15 to 25 milligrams a day, all the way up to 25 milligrams twice daily. Female athletes typically do well with 2.5 or 5 milligrams a day, with occasional and questionably wise increases up to 10 milligrams a day. Notably, some people online will claim that tolerance of doses above 25 milligrams per day indicates counterfeit or underdose product, but in practice, I've seen many patients tolerate 25 milligrams twice daily without show-stopping symptoms like GI issues or intolerable back pumps. Now, pharmaceutical-grade Anavar is scarce and frequently replaced by counterfeit or mislabeled substances on the underground market. Most Anavar not obtained from a compound or via prescription is often Winstrol, T-Ball, or another easier to make, more readily available oral compound. My recommendation is always just don't do steroids. Just don't. It, seriously, it's not worth it for the overwhelming majority of humans. But in the spirit of harm reduction, if you are considering Anavar, stick to lower doses and short cycles, four to eight weeks generally speaking. Regular health monitoring for liver, cholesterol, and hormonal levels is essential in addition to supportive supplements and ancillary medications to help protect your health and mitigate sides. So in conclusion, yes, Anavar stands heads and shoulders above other oral steroids in several categories, with one of them being safety, but it still comes with serious risks and caveats. Smart decisions demand real knowledge, caution, and respect for your body's limitations. If this cleared up Anavar mysteries or just upgraded your gym conversations, smash that like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Comment below with your own experiences or questions, and let's keep the conversation honest and informed. Until next time, this is Dr. Alex Tatum signing off.